This favorite hymn about the unfailing friendship of Jesus was written by a man who had few close friends on earth. He had experienced the sorrows of grief and loneliness, and he had poured out his life in service to others without thought or repayment of any kind. In fact, it was said of Joseph Scriven that he would only work for those who could not pay. Born into a prosperous Irish family on September 10, 1819, Joseph Scriven successfully completed the requirements for entrance to Trinity College in Dublin, but after attending for only a short time, he decided to leave and join the army. His military career, however, was cut short by poor health, and he returned to Trinity College, where he earned his Bachelor's of Arts degree. With his education behind him and a long and happy life ahead, Joseph Scriven decided to wed his sweetheart. But the night before their wedding, tragedy struck. Scriven's fiancée was thrown from the horse she was riding and into a river where she was drowned. Overcome with grief, Scriven became despondent and introspective and withdrew from his friends and family. He made the decision to leave the religious traditions of his parents in favor of those of the Plymouth Brethren. In connection with that decision, he determined to leave his homeland and migrate to Canada in 1844 at the age of 25. With the move, Scriven refocused his life to concentrating on living the lifestyle described by Christ in the Sermon on the Mount. He became a servant of the underprivileged, assisting the handicapped and poverty-stricken, the ill and the imprisoned. He cut and hauled wood for destitute families so they might survive the frigid winters of Port Hope, Ontario. Although he was respected by the townspeople for his deeds of mercy, he was viewed as an eccentric and was not integrated into their fellowship. Nonetheless, Scriven met and fell in love with a young Canadian woman and again planned to marry. But before the wedding took place, once more tragedy struck as the young woman contracted pneumonia and died. At the same time, Scriven received news that his mother back in Dublin was seriously ill. He did not have the funds to finance a trip home, so he wrote the three verses of a poem he titled, Pray Without Ceasing, and sent them to his mother, hoping they would lift her spirits and comfort her. Some time later, when Scriven himself was confined to his bed with illness, a neighbor stopped in to see him. As they talked, the friend saw a paper at the side of the bed with the words of Scriven's poem scrawled on it. After reading the poem, the man inquired, of Scriven, uh, in, inquired if Scriven had written it. He replied, The Lord and I did it between us. Securing Scriven's permission, the neighbor saw to it that the poem was published in a small collection of poetry called Hymns and Other Verses. Some time later, Charles Converse, a well-known composer of that day, wrote a melody for the verses. Scriven had, or the verses Scriven had penned. The hymn was then retitled, What a Friend We Have in Jesus, after the first line of the text. On a cold morning in October of 1886, the body of Joseph Scriven was found in Rice Lake in Baudley, Ontario. He had departed from his lonely life and gone to be with his best friend, Jesus. And in his memory, the citizens of Port Hope, Ontario, erected a simple monument. On its face they inscribed the words of Scriven's hymn. The last line reflects the author's final hope. In his arms he'll take and shield thee. Thou wilt find a solace there. What a friend we have in Jesus. All our sins and griefs to bear. What a privilege to carry everything to God in prayer. Oh, what peace we often forfeit. Oh, what needless pain we bear. 
all because we do not carry everything to God in prayer. Have we trials and temptations? Is there trouble anywhere? We should never be discouraged. Take it to the Lord in prayer. Can we find a friend so faithful who will all our sorrow share? Jesus knows our every weakness. Take it to the Lord in prayer. Are we weak and heavy laden, cumbered with a load of care? Precious Savior, still our refuge, take it to the Lord in prayer. Do thy friends despise, forsake thee? Take it to the Lord in prayer. In his arms he'll take and shield thee. Thou wilt find a solace there. 